Hey guys, uh, we're gonna have a quick conversation here about how to handle the uncertainty of averaged values, okay? So here I have some data. Um, these headers are not perfect, by the way, uh, but I have some data here. I have volume in this column, and then I have uh, trials where I have taken the masses of uh, some things doesn't really matter what they are, okay. Um, so I have trial one, trial two, trial three, trial four, trial, trial five, and these are all the trials then for my volume of one centimeter cubed. Okay, hopefully you are all with me. Uh, you should, I'd like that to go away. You should, in theory, then average all of this stuff. So how do we do that? Uh, we hit the equal sign. We hit A, V, and that brings up average. And then in these parentheses, we need to select trials one through five. Okay, and that will then produce this value. We get a little warning notification here uh, where it says the formula omits adjacent cells. Don't worry about that. Okay, so does this average make sense for these values? Answer, yeah, I mean, just looking at it, it looks like it is in the ballpark, okay? So we're gonna call that good. Now, I could repeat that exact process for all of my cells, but that would be foolish because computers are very, very good at repetitive tasks and human beings are not. So instead, I'm going to grab the corner here and drag it down. And now I have averages for all of my stuff. I'll just delete this for right now. Okay, so averages all done. Now, what is the uncertainty of my average? This is kind of a tricky question because if you look at the mass in grams, I have a, a very sensitive scale, as you can see. It is good to three decimal places, which implies a very low degree of uncertainty. However, my values are varying quite a lot, which means that I have a high amount of random error in my measurements, which is not so great, okay? So what can I do? Well, uh, another formula is going to help. Here we have the formula for procedural uncertainty, and this is what we need. So we take our maximum value from this data set and our minimum value from this data set and we divide that by two. Now, uh, doing that for each of these in our entire data set is gonna be really annoying and time consuming, but there is another option. First, hit the equal sign and throw a couple of parentheses in there. The formula is fine, be quiet. Okay, next we need a maximum and that's given by max and we will select our five cells again, okay? From our maximum, we are going to subtract our min or minimum and select our cells yet a third time. Now, uh, that, these two values, maximum, minus, minimum, those should all be in parentheses, which we set up earlier. We will now divide everything by two and hit the enter button. And now I have uncertainty. Done, easy. However, uh, important point, uncertainty is always to one significant figure. So I'm going to decrease using this button right here, the number of decimal places. And now I have one significant figure for uncertainty, which is appropriate. And I would also want to round my average then to uh, one decimal place as well. Okay, uh, in my final analysis. Okay, so now I'm going to drag this down. And now I have uncertainties for all of my averages. Sweet, super sweet. Also, my fan has kicked on, which is very, very 
not sweet. Hold on. You know what? I'm just gonna we're just gonna live with it. Sorry for the annoying noise. Okay, next thing I need to do then is uh, go ahead and insert a chart. And I prefer scatter plots. They're just great. And I could uh, select all of this data, but that would be foolish. We don't need all this data. We only need our average and Wait, there. Okay, so uh, this chart needs a lot of work. We need to add some axes. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add chart elements. We're going to add uh, first axes titles. We go primary horizontal. There it is. We go Add chart element, primary vertical. Okay, so now I have titles here. These obviously need to be modified. Uh, I can insert a trend line pretty easily, but one thing I really want to do here is show you how to insert error bars. So we're gonna go for more error bar options. And note that we immediately um, get a whole bunch of options here. Hold on. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, insert error bars, more error bar options. There we go. Okay, direction should be both, but we don't want a fixed amount. We want a custom amount. And this is on the vertical error bar, which would be uh, should be okay. So uh, we're looking at our vertical error bars here. Our volume error bars, and these are going to be on the x-axis, these are going to be uh, relatively small. So let's just focus on the vertical bars for right now. Okay, we're going to go custom, and we're going to specify the value. And we will do that by going uh, and selecting some data. We're going to select the data in our uncertainty column. And hit enter. And then for the negative value, we do the same thing. Okay, so just pick this button here. And select your data. And we will hit OK. And it tells me there is a problem with the formula. Try that again. Okay, so now we should be good. Uh, so now our vertical error bars are looking nice. Our horizontal error bars in this case would be plus minus uh, 0 0.5 centimeters cubed. Um, so we can adjust those as well. Again, we go more error bar options. This time we are looking for uh, horizontal bars so we need to pick the horizontal bars and we will go fixed value and our fixed value in this case is 0 0.5 okay and hit enter and there we go there you go so you've got custom error bars on your chart things are looking pretty good right now would not be a bad idea to add a trend line. And you can do that by going to add chart element, trend line, linear, done. Uh, if you would like to add uh, multiple slopes and look at trend line uncertainty, uh, that is a good idea at this point. And I think I'm going to have to make a separate video for that because Things are getting a little loud, indeed. Okay, have a great day.